Hello everyone and welcome back to the Heroes Lounge Weekly Recap. Now, first of all, we weekly-ish. First of all, we can say we're sorry for being most sloppy over Easter. It's Easter bank holiday. Family, games, and just being on holiday managed to steal everyone's time for casters and editors and players alike. However, over there, in the last two weeks, we have seen some ridiculous action across Heroes Lounge, which we will get to with all the divisions momentarily. But the key points to carry on for remembering is that the Switch map, now we're on week four, heading into week number five, the Swiss matchmaking is turning out to be absolutely brilliant. It has provided us with way, way less stomps. The matchup, because there's been less stomps, the matchups have been significantly more interesting. Lots more games have been going into game number three, and we're beginning, we're just beginning to see it paying dividends, despite the slight pain of having to make sure games are scheduled significantly earlier, significantly quicker, and in a tighter time scale. Now, also to remember that the playoffs are happening week end of the June fifth. That is in some weeks. Um, that is the key date to keep in your calendars: the Heroes Lounge playoffs of week of June the sixth. And to remind people. We have top eight teams of Division 1, top four of Division 2, two of Division 3, and the top one team each from Division 4 and from Division 5. And as I say, we have two weeks to catch up on here, so we are going to go through it as quick as humanly possible, starting with Division 5. That's right, we're going, that's right, we are going ascending in divisions this time, starting in with Division 5. In no surprises in the top of Division 5, we have the Port Support sitting on four wins, zero losses, without even dropping a map. They have won against other favourites, Hot Stuff and Veterans 23 APM over the last two weeks. The next team they should be facing will therefore be the Dropkick Murky, sat in position number two, which have won three of their games and also not lost any maps winning against Puppies and Shark Tanks, a previous Division 2 team, and against Low Fat Gamers, who are also a, say, from Season 2. The pre One of the previous high runners in Division 5, the Potatoes 007, for the honourable mention, have slipped off of the top spot, unfortunately, having lost against 23 APM and running into a knife, respectively. <laughs> Uh, the, however, Potatoes did manage to hold 23 APM to accord quite nicely with an absolutely glorious Medivac cheese to core, which made it a very, very fun game to watch. On number three is, is as we're saying, the running into a knife. Being followed by 23 APM, Low Fat Gamers hanging in there with two wins and zero losses at the moment. Murky Slaves also bringing up the rear of the top runners for Division 5, but it does look like for the playoffs, the Port Support will be the ones to watch. Division 4, in a similar vein, Order of Gul'dan is also dominating their division. Have won in the last two weeks against Teamism and previous Season 2 players, Abafirs at rank 7 and 10, and have also won all four of their games, followed up by Informatic, We Are Not Prepared, Inside, inside, in theory, and team awesome. Um, we have Informatic have also beaten Aberfurs. Aberfurs not going particularly well in the last couple of weeks, but still holding in at rank 10, 2 and 2. There are, of course, still five weeks of games left to go, and we could see it's Heroes Lounge, and literally anything can happen. Other honorable mentions Team Proudmore, team, Teamism, and Team Awesome are hanging in there at two and one respectively and game against goes on game of uh proudmore is going on with team awesome today which unfortunately i don't have the result for but will be reflected in the image uh next door to you division three the meme division um has very few front runners in it actually has the highest number seems to be the closest division has the highest number of teams sat at two wins and two losses um, current leaders are Team RPV, which have the four wins and no losses, with a total map score of seven, and beating other front runners. Trust Issues well, during this week, taking Trust Issues' undefeated streak down. 
Um, Cartivans won against Senpai's Groupies, who are currently sat somewhere. Um, and they will play against also other very strong team, Team Ying Yang, so at, on Monday the 24th. That is Monday coming. Team Plasma, Team Solid's younger cousin, is going up again, have in the last two weeks, had had the issues. They had two games um, happen on the Monday the 10th, which was the day of Blizzard server issues. That was COB Salt Shakers and Senpai's Groupies, where they won partly due to clowning from the other teams, but it's wins. Take it. Team Plasma is doing particularly well. Bringing up the rear of the leaders for Division 3, we have Crocodox, 30 seconds to march, Team Yin Yang, Solid, and Salt Shakers all sat at two wins and one loss. With most of the games for Division 3 happening, it seems to be happening on Monday coming, actually, um, uh, with Team Solid going up against Destructors, 30 seconds going up against Pragdigma. Crocodox play against Agents on today, when you are watching this, that is a game to watch later. And... But otherwise, Division 3, aside from the two front runners, seem, seem pretty close, and we never know. We could have the Cartavans bring, who are in second place, bring down RPD. Division 2 is being led by the combination 3 and 0 of Estoril Esports, who previously were Faust Air Travel. Boys, why did you change that name? I love that name. Why, why did you change Faust Air Travel, boys? Like, like why? Why did you do this? Followed up also by Nightmare and Team Bananas. All three, I believe, are teams new to Heroes Lounge this season, with Storal beating Starboys, also veterans, and going up against Boosted Bonobos at some point next week. Nightmare were able to beat PhD in damage. Bananas were beating Man Bear Pig on Thursday. Throw Inc are slightly trailing in the division with 2-1, and one, having beaten Lethal Grill Friends. Uh, balance of interests, then, despite their initial strong showing, are starting to fall back a little bit, with two wins, two losses, having lost to Lethal Grill Friends also on Thursday. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, Division 1. We have a surprise lead in Division 1, Team Always Woo, which again, I believe, is a new team into the division, currently sitting at four wins and zero losses, meaning that relatively soon they will go up against reigning champions Fat Five, who are sat in position two. I think possibly by sheer virtue of they just haven't played their fourth round game yet. Now, Always Woo, however, have won against some very strong existing Heroes Lounge teams. They have beaten Gaming in the Rhythm and Faustad still bugged, 2 and 0. Um, now, Fat 5 are playing today. They are playing against the Shisha Boys, who are sat, currently sat at rank 4. Gorge Good Alt are at rank 3, but show, having a relatively slow, slow thing slow start to the season, having unfortunately being able to have a draw against Team TFT due to scheduling issues and also beat Falstad still bugged due to some aggressive gusting from the Falstad team, which went a little bit south. Gorge Good Alt have to play Team Thinking on at some point soon, who went up against Names Too Hard and yeah, uh, Gold Godalt, as I say, will be playing against Team Thinking relatively soon the, over the next week, which will be an interesting one to watch. My Insanity have been showing incredible improvement and being sat against, being sat on rank 5, will also play Gaming in the Rhythm, who are on rank 9. My Insanity did unfortunately lose to Fat 5, no shame in that at all. Um, but the, and finally, for this week, the best match of the entirety of last week was the Swish family versus the ponies with no tricks. Previously, the no trick ponies are Heroes Lounge veteran. Tight three map series in the end. Ponies absolutely nailed the early game, taking keeps down early, forcing Swish family to defend, but have Swish family turned it around, taking rag out, ponies making a couple of mistakes, and basically Swish taking it in with the last Punisher Unfortunately, VP timing, as it turns out, the, it was the only reason that game swung in the way it did. But you should never count out the ponies. They were semi-finalists 
They were they were second place last season. Season one champions. Never ever discount the ponies. They will be back, and we will see them in the playoffs, no doubt. Rank eight, bring up the rear for playoff slots is James Baker, who beat again throw the team throw the advantage on Tuesday. However, in top of Division one, that's really the all of the action really to go through. So, teams to watch. As always, will be the no trick. Will be the ponies with no tricks. Will be new and improved. My insanity. Gorge good alt. Fat five, and always woo. As well as the Swish family, bringing Kendrick Swish in is glorious for our view account. Things to finish up with, guys. We also last week had the Heroes Lounge podcast. It was streamed last Saturday. It is already on YouTube, available for you to watch. Go and. Look at it, see, see what you think. This last week we talked about Veteran Chess, the King of the Storm Tournament, the HGC. We had interview with Buds, the support player from Team 8, and much, much more from Nira, Galen Gunner, Jabroni, and Halloween. The podcast were trying to get a bit more regularity to its scheduling and its recording, and we will be trying to get it in every single week as possible. Next... Tune in, keep at, keep sending your questions to Halloween, keep sending your topics of discussion you would like to be, have brought up, and we will try our best to get as much in as possible. Super Sunday! As ever, we have a huge, huge number of games going on on Sunday. We have Team Face versus Sky High kicking off the action at 3 o'clock, followed by Crocodox and Agents and Team TFT versus Bat17. Sky High then playing their second game, so lots of Div 5. Throw the advantage going also up against Bat 17. Lots of teams playing two games in a day. That's, that's brave of you boys. And and Face as well. There's, there's lots of teams playing two games. This is it's going to be tough for them. Um, now, the thing to say about Sunday, as much as we love it being Super Sunday, and that's where we get all of our results and we get one hell of a long pass going on, we have free channels at the moment for this reason. There are free four games at the moment already going on at seven o'clock and there are so many matches paralleled plus casters having to play their own games we are starting to have problems getting every game casted if you would like to become a hero's lounge caster please get in contact with heartless and he will help sort you out give you a couple of trials bring you in as long as you have a half decent pc and an internet connection to handle it Come and give casting a go. We always, always need more casters. And I'm not going to lie with you. This season, we're starting to struggle. We're starting to struggle a lot with casting just due to the sheer number of games that we have. Regardless, tune in from 3 o'clock Central European time all the way through until probably about 10 o'clock with the highlight finisher being Shisha Boys versus Fat Five starting at 9 there will be the Funny Bunny Murky giveaway going on at the end of the Sunday, so make sure you get your Revlo points farmed up for that and get your tickets in for that giveaway. I say that will be at the end. Right, guys, hope I was able to... I'm just double-checking my document. I'm pretty sure I managed to riddle through all of the important points here, and I hope this has been useful for you all, and I will see you again next week. Keep that Super Sunday going, keep that Revlo points farming, and good luck in Heroes Lounge. Bye-bye now.